Hello again everyone, and today I'll be taking an in-depth look at Canon's latest Super Telephoto L lens. The EF 100-400mm f4.5-5.6 IS USM L Mark II. This replaces the Mark I lens, which I reviewed a couple of years ago, in itself one of Canon's most popular telephoto zoom lenses, although in my review I wasn't particularly impressed with its image quality, aging image stabilisation system or push-pull zoom mechanism. Still, people raved about that older lens, even though it was clear there was room for improvement, and so this new Mark II model of the lens has been hotly anticipated. Like all of Canon's L lenses, it's designed for full-frame digital SLR cameras, although it will also work with APS-C cameras and mirrorless cameras if you use an adapter. It costs £1,700, or a little over US$2,000, a huge amount of money, so this thing had better be good. If you're on the market for a telephoto zoom lens, then I think that getting a 100-400mm lens offers a real advantage over a 70-300 if the price difference is affordable to you. 100-400mm lenses are bigger and heavier, of course, but the extra reach 400mm makes is a nice difference in nature photography and shooting birds particularly if you're shooting with an APS-C camera, where your field of view can reach the full-frame equivalent of 640mm. Also, with this lens, there's the possibility of using Canon's 1.4x or 2x extenders to give you even further reach. The maximum aperture of f4.5 to 5.6 means that this lens does not let in a large amount of light, but that's compensated for very well by its excellent new image stabilisation system. Here's some footage at 400mm without stabilisation, and here it is turned on. Once it kicks in, you can see that it's very efficient to stabilise your footage for video work or for much sharper still pictures. Still, image stabilisation can't help you to freeze action with fast shutter speeds, so if you need a lens for sports photography, you might want something with an f4 or f2.8 maximum aperture instead. Anyway, the build quality of this lens is second to none, as you might expect. Being made of metal, it's very tough and it weighs over 1.5 kilograms. It's built around a metal lens mount with weather sealing. This time, we have a zoom ring instead of a push-pull system. That's much better, if you ask me. The zoom ring is nice and large and turns smoothly, and there's an additional control ring below, which lets you tighten the zoom ring, if needed. A potentially useful feature. The manual focus ring is actually one of the smoothest to turn that I've ever used in a lens with an autofocus system. It's silky smooth to turn and very precise too, so if you need to focus manually you shouldn't have any problems, and you can turn that focus ring whenever your lens is set to autofocus or manual focus. The USM autofocus motor is very fast when you're zoomed out to 100mm, and a little slower when you're zoomed in, but that's hardly surprising, as more precision is being demanded at tight focal lengths. It's very quiet and it focused very accurately in all my tests. The lens has a 77mm filter thread and comes with a large hood with a switchable gap underneath for adjusting filters. It has extra options too to limit your autofocus range and different options for the stabilisation system. Overall, the lens's build quality is exactly what you'd expect from an L lens at this price point. Awesome! As I mentioned earlier, I always thought the original 100-400mm L lens left a little bit to be desired, so let's see about this new lens's image quality. First, I'll be testing on a full-frame camera, my 20MP Canon 6D, with in-camera corrections turned on. At 100mm and f4.5, the lens is razor sharp in the middle with excellent contrast. Over in the corners, it's very sharp, if not quite perfect. It's the same at f5.6, but stop down to f8 and we see a little extra edge of sharpness. Let's zoom in a bit to 250mm. At the new maximum aperture of f5, we see razor sharpness again in the middle, and this time, the lens is also excellently sharp in the corners, straight from that maximum aperture. 
You can stop down as far as F11 before seeing any softness due to diffraction. And finally, the all-important 400mm setting. In the middle of the image, we almost have perfect sharpness, and happily, the corners perform just as well. Fantastic! Again, even stop down to f11, the lens remains as sharp. So, on a full-frame camera, this lens can seriously deliver. Let's see now about the more difficult question of a high-resolution APS-C camera, my little Canon EOS M3. At 100mm, the lens is excellently sharp from the middle into the corners, from f4.5 down to about f11. Nice! Let's zoom in to 250mm. At f5, the lens continues to perform fantastically well in the middle, but the corners here are a touch softer. Stop down to f8 to get great sharpness again though. And finally, 400mm. The lens's central sharpness continues to impress, even at f5.6, and over in the corners, there's only a slight drop in resolution again. If you stop down to f8 though, then even those corners are bitingly sharp. So even on an APS-C camera, the lens gives us no reason for complaint. Super telephoto lenses often struggle on APS-C cameras, but not this one. Using this lens with an APS-C camera for extra reach is a serious option for professional wildlife photographers. Alright then, how about distortion and vignetting on a full-frame camera? At 100mm we see only slight distortion and a touch of vignetting, which, if you stop down, goes away. At 250mm the distortion is gone, and again there's only a touch of vignetting. And at 400mm, we see very slight pincushion distortion and somewhat noticeable vignetting at f5.6. Stop down to f8 though, and it's largely gone. Or, of course, use peripheral illumination on your camera. The lens can focus as closely as about 95cm, a very close distance indeed at 400mm, so you can really reach into smaller subjects. Thankfully, we still see quite sharp image quality at close focus distances. How well does the lens work against bright light? Unfortunately, there are no pleasant surprises here. Plenty of flaring artifacts and a loss of contrast. Use the lens hood. Finally, bokeh. This lens's out of focus backgrounds are not the smoothest I've ever seen in my life, but they're perfectly fine, really. There's nothing distracting going on here. Overall, the new Canon 100-400mm L lens is pretty much everything we hoped for. Improved build quality, better image stabilisation, and its optics are crazy sharp. It's easily the sharpest lens I've ever tested that goes beyond 300mm, especially on an APS-C camera. A lot of wildlife photographers, and maybe some sports photographers who shoot in the daylight, will have this lens on top of their Christmas list to Santa Claus. If you're seeking to do professional work, then the lens is just about worth the huge financial investment it demands. Highly recommended.